I'm Claire Hill from FAI Farms. We farm 1,200 acres just outside Oxford. Um, we've got beef, uh, both, both a suckler herd and dairy, dairy crosses, and um, laying hens, which you can see here behind us. We uh, take a regenerative approach to, to farming, and that started for us a couple of years ago. I think there was a few things that came together um, that made us decide to go down that route. One was, um, uh, and we, we, we worked really hard on our grazing improvement and we were growing a lot more grass and we could ho hold a lot more animals but we didn't have anywhere to put them in the winter other than spending money on sheds that we didn't have so um, we kind of started looking for a different way and regenerative agriculture was one of the things that we've um, decided to, to embrace and it's been a really exciting time for us. Our first, uh, I guess, um, approach for um, agroforestry was when we planted all of these trees, uh, which we did about 20 years ago, and that was part of a poultry and natural environments project uh, that was funded by DEFRA to look at the welfare benefits of um, trees for laying hens. And over the years, we've kind of done more work on that and expanded that out to the point that we did a big um, peer-reviewed project uh, that showed that hens reared um, when, when it, it, where they have trees on the range have lower mortality, more first class eggs, um, better feather cover um, and, and overall therefore more, more profitable. Um, and that, that's actually the work that the RSPCA then used um, to make it a requirement within their standards to have tree cover on the range for laying hens. So when we planted this it was more a focus of getting trees in plots because it was, it, was, it was kind of a trial but, and, and of course when we put them in they were, they were whips and now we have these, these great big trees. Um, you can see they could probably do with some thinning out um, and we haven't ever properly kind of managed it in, in a, for trees but what is great is how much the hens love it and you can see the hens around me kind of scratching, dust bathing, dust bathing and coming away from the shed. So the advantage of trees is that, well, of course, hens are jungle fowl and so feel safest under, under tree canopy. Um, and, and so we get the kind of good results and high welfare. We get full feathered birds right up to 90 and 100 weeks old. Um, and we put that down almost entirely to, um, to the tree cover that we have. Our hens are uh, high line brown. Um, breed of hen, so a, a, a standard commercial breed of hen. Um, and when it comes to the tree species, we've got um, a mixture of um, evergreen uh, conifers, Scots pine, and sort of native hardwoods um, like ash and oak, um, with some faster growing species like silver birch interspersed. And our reasoning for those at the time was to see whether there were um, differences in, in what the hens liked um, and whether that would give us information about what would be preferable when planting trees on, on hen ranges. But I think uh, the, the results of it really are that um, a variety is good. We know that variety is good for nature and good for biodiversity, so it um, doesn't really matter what the variety. Uh, and that um, just having the, the canopy cover and the variation, uh, the birds use different bits in different ways. Um, particularly in winter, it's nice with the, with the kind of full cover of the Scots pines because it keeps a dry area underneath for, for dust bathing. Um, but it's nice to have some of the, the hardwood native species so there's a bit more light within, within the woods whereas the, 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 the evergreens it can come a bit overbearing. There are uh, a number of key natural behaviours that lead to hens being the happiest they can be. When, they, when any animal can express their natural behaviour we know that's when they're happiest and healthiest and what trees do is allow all of those natural behaviours to be expressed in a great way so that scratching, dust bathing, pecking, um, those things can all take place under the trees which you don't necessarily get when you've got free range birds on kind of areas where either grass or uh, barren land because birds are they're quite heavy tramplers um, actually. Interestingly we've got a mobile shed now like uh, properly mobile as in we move it every day not every cycle um, and it is amazing the impact that the hens have um, just in a day on, on an area of ground so they're quite they're quite heavy tramplers um, so having the trees um, allows them to have an area to carry out all of those natural behaviors um, and we, we any any 
trees, uh, tree planting on laying hen ranges is wi widely adopted now. A number of supermarket schemes, um, the RSPCA um, assured scheme have trees planted. But I would definitely, if anybody was wondering about whether to plant trees with their for their laying hens, I would definitely say yes. Um, we've only seen benefits. We've had no no negatives. Um, there's always a bit of a challenge on the tree management and I think as I've mentioned you can see ours haven't been we've not really managed them we just planted them and let them go um, but we, we, you know they can be managed better uh, the, the hens don't care they think it's great but if you wanted to make it more of a timber crop or something else then it, it just takes a bit of a bit of reading up on on that sort of thing. I don't think anyone would argue with the benefit of planting trees like we all know that trees are good and I get what my focus is on trying to how can we bring trees into the system where they bring benefit to the agricultural our, our kind of agriculture and our farming so it's not a case of planting just setting aside an area of the farm where we're going to plant trees it's how do we incorporate them in because I've seen, well, we've seen firsthand the kind of extremes of, of, of heat and, and drought that we're getting in these recent years. And, and that is stressful for livestock and, and the hens definitely and the cattle and sheep all, all crowd under the trees. And we, all, we don't have enough trees on the farm anymore, for sure, um, out in the middle of pastures, in the middle of fields. And that's something that we've been working on. And that's my kind of next step. How do we incorporate trees into the rest of the farm? So we've got loads of trees here, but this is only like a small um, few hundred square metre plot it's not like the whole farm looks like this and so how can we how can we kind of spread the benefit um, where, where I'm thinking uh, about going with that is um, with also trees that are these were planted purely to provide shelter for, for, for hens and that's been great um, we've we've had great welfare all the way through I would never doubt that, that, that the hens don't benefit from being under the trees um, but this is only geared up to really have hens in amongst it. So how do we spread that to the rest of the farm? And then how do we make how do we make those trees work for us as well? Because these are all lovely, but they've we've we've not managed the thinning or anything very well. So they're not exactly useful timber trees. Um, so the, the the next thought is planting fruit and nut and other trees that can bring us some crops in future years, um, but also provide shade and shelter to the livestock and um, add add biodiversity to to the farm as well. Financing trees is, um, uh, you know, something that is, of course, on on all of our minds. And these originally were funded as part of the Defra project, um, but that was a kind of unique situation. It's not sort of something widely available. Um, but we've just put in an, a countryside stewardship higher tier application, and as part of that, we thought about that whole concept of how do we bring trees into the farm um, so we're actually putting a, a kind of large area into wood pasture so we've, we're lucky to have a, a woodland on the border of our farm and so trying to kind of extend that biodiversity out not making it as dense but having a number of trees throughout the pasture that will kind of provide the benefits um, benefits for the livestock and um, I think it's, it's well documented you know the temperature differences under trees and outside of trees and that the heat stress that that brings on the animal and the productivity sort of um, detriment that you then get from having having hot animals and of course those longer hotter summers or summer periods we're getting interspersed with the rain um, is is meaning um, that that is contribute will be contributing although I haven't done the sums yet will be contributing to our productivity and therefore profitability equally in winter like one of the biggest costs on a on a beef farm is 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 over winter housing um, and we've been the last couple of years we've been out wintering um, a, a number of our cattle increasing those numbers each year but again, we don't have much shade and shelter in the middle of the field. So in the depth of winter, um, it, it can be pretty brutal or we have to move them to different areas on the farm to make sure they've got that shade and shelter. So what I'm really excited about with the wood pasture as part of countryside stewardship is that we can get that shelter in, in, in the field um, and we can outwinter then and reduce our, reduce our housing costs um, and, and, and kind of input costs for not having as much straw, tractors, diesel, labour, all of those things reduce and that's, that's where our, our kind of that's where we can make um, a, be a better margin. At FAI we work with food businesses, uh, retailers, food service companies, supply companies etc um, on improving um, their production systems whether that be on um, animal welfare, environmental metrics, uh, regenerative agriculture. Regenerative agriculture is a big focus area now for the work um, of everything we're doing. We're working on that with nearly every client that we work with. 
and that's really exciting for us. Um, I kind of moved on from that sustainability um, space because um, kind of we're learning now S sustaining is sustainability is about sustaining the status quo and we've already uh, I think we're learning um, that we, we, we've gone too far so even if we could sustain it right now uh, we, we've already done too much and so what's really exciting about regenerative agriculture is it's about not about doing less bad or about limiting our carbon impact it's about doing good and actually drawing carbon back into the soil um, in a way that kind of revitalizes everything, soil health, animal health, um, people health. And that's something that's uh, really exciting that everybody, like it's such an exciting space to be at the moment because everybody, um, ev everybody is, is talking about it. And it feels hopeful in a time that farming feels sometimes quite hard work. Uh, within the UK, of course, we've got payments being phased out. Um, there's maybe anti-animal agriculture agenda that is quite stressful. It can be quite um, not, not a nice place to be. You feel like all we're trying to do is produce good food and all everybody wants to do is, is haters. And I guess that's what's nice about um, a regenerative system is it kind of feels good. And when you tell the story about it, there's nothing that people don't like about it. Um, and that's a really refreshing space um, uh, space to be in agriculture and of course 50% of the world's area is used to produce food um, and and so that means that agri with agriculture and forestry and of course agroforestry if you combine the two are the only industries that have the opportunity to draw carbon down naturally like to actually help mitigate climate change without having to invest in lots of big technology or air scrubbers or whatever other kind of crazy schemes if we just think differently about the way that we manage our farmland as it stands we can actually have a huge impact like that is really exciting and um, and empowering so I love it doing it here on the farm but also what's great about FAI is that we work with um, other groups of farmers food businesses and uh, we're able to kind of um, share the knowledge that we get from the farm here um, and, and build something better together